E3 has come and gone and excited all the gamers around the world. It was truly, I think, uh, a good a good time for gamers. Uh, lots of hype titles, lots of amazing things I look very much forward to. And uh, uh, where do we even begin? Uh, I think everybody pretty much brought their A-game this year. Uh, specifically, but this... Uh, let's ignore the broad spectrum right now and let's talk specifically about Bethesda's first conference I think ever let's talk about that because we got definitely got some things to talk about so let's dig into Bethesda's E3 2015 presentation Okay, first things first, uh, let's dig into Doom, which was the first presentation I believe they had. I was a very huge fan of the original 2D, uh, you know, first-person shooter uh, Doom. Uh, I know Brutal Doom came out not too long ago, and that actually improved the original game by adding, uh, uh, enhancing everything and adding lots of more gore, so that was really awesome. The point is, I also played uh, Doom 3, and I definitely messed around with Doom 3, and, and I, I liked the game. It was one of my earliest uh, PC games that I actually owned. Owned. Now, uh, so with the release of Doom, I thought it was it looked really nice. Uh, the new uh, some of the enemy designs I really like. Uh, the Revenant or Revenant, whatever, whatever you want to pronounce it, uh, looks really cool. And I, I believe in multiplayer, you can actually play as it. Uh, another thing that I'm, I'm excited about. Um, for those of you who don't know, familiar with the things that I like, I'm heavy, heavy into customization or rather uh, level. Uh, editors, map editors, any sort of thing that lets me, you know, go, uh, gives me the tools to like run wild with things. Uh, I definitely did that with uh, modding in Doom 3. I, I would go into a level uh, single player map and I would edit out the map layout however I want and uh, I would edit out like uh, enemy spawns and different kinds of uh, weapons. So I would try to make the game more difficult and, and, and put enemies where I think they would fit in uh, well in the map. A good example of this would be like if there's a section where there is a fire that started, I would put like a, a some sort of fire zombie there. You know, it, it would be really cool, and that's how it, I would I would uh, have fun with Doom Three. And the really awesome thing that they announced for uh, this uh, Doom for uh, Bethesda, they announced a uh, Doom Snap Map, which looks amazing. This looks awesome, and I cannot wait to try it out. Basically, is it's as simple as it gets. You snap in pieces. Uh, over like a bird's eye view of the entire area, right? So you can snap in like a long hallway corridor or a bigger section and just like play it off like that. I believe it looks like you can make linear paths because I did see some linear paths um, when they're making the maps. Uh, but ob obviously they also make a multiplayer map. So that's really cool. Uh, the point is I'm looking heavy into that. Uh, you can add like graphics and, and specifics item locations and even use uh, like uh, sort of like mini scripts really like scripted events like if you pick up an armor piece a hell knight's gonna spawn and, and really cool stuff like that so that was really cool next up i believe is dishonored 2 now that uh trailer did look really awesome it looks really amazing again with the feeling the whole uh steampunk uh environment and atmosphere of course that's awesome and it, it you know, it's really interesting to follow off uh, this character in particular. Uh, I believe they said we're going to follow uh, two different storylines with two different characters. So that's really awesome. You can pick either or. I'm heavy looking forward to it. I'm really hyped. Uh, let's see what Dishonored 2 brings to the table. All right, next up, I believe, is Elder Scrolls Legend. Uh, not much, really much to say about this. Um, another, you know, uh, game. Uh, you know, just another game attached to the whole uh, Elder Scrolls lore, right? So we got, uh, in this case, uh, it's a very good comparison to actually compare it to Hearthstone. It, that's basically uh, what it's coming off as. It's a, it's a competitive card game uh, for Skyrim. It's called Skyrim Legends, and uh, it sounds exactly what it, you know, what it, you think it sounds. I believe you get some legends, right, from the lore of Elder Scrolls, like, and you pick your heroes or your certain... Uh, evil people from different races and uh, different factions and stuff like that and it's uh, we haven't seen gameplay of it yet but we know we're planning something like that and obviously it's going to be made for a uh, tablet so that's really cool 
And the moment we've all been waiting for, I don't know why I'm talking like this, but of course we have to talk about Fallout 4. How can you not? The presentation started easily enough, showing us the beautiful, beautiful renderings and different artwork they did for the game. Just the different sketches and concept art that they have uh, detailed for the awesome Boston atmosphere and environment. So it, it, everything looks really legit and you can tell that their art team brought everything to the table. Now, uh, one thing, just really quick, tiny detail to point out is uh, just a, a concept art for, I believe, one of the enemies in the game. Is that the Boston Redcoats? Redcoats, you don't fool me. Of course there's going to be some Redcoats, nice and Redcoats in, in, in Boston. There, there has to be some sort of enemy types like that, so that's probably just a tiny glimpse of what we might have in the game as far as enemy types goes. Next thing I want to talk about... Okay, and then they start uh, the presentation off with, uh, finally, gameplay, uh, which is awesome, and they actually show us the, one of the first gameplay elements of the game, and that is, of course, customizing your character. And easily enough, they do this without any sliders, any sorts of other menus popping out. Uh, you just literally simply click and drag or, uh, keep on clicking on any facial feature that you want to change. So if you want to, you know, change your nose or change the, the size of your lips or ears, you can just click on it, or your skin color, uh, easy, you know, just easy peasy, lemon squeezy, you just click on it and it changes. And of course, they uh, did confirm that you can play as a female character, so that's really awesome. And I really dig this whole uh, aspect of customizing your character in front of the mirror. So it's really a wonderful way to incorporate that element uh, into the game. So I thought that was really cool. Next, we kind of see this whole, uh, the kitchen uh, right here. This looks, the colors obviously, you know, uh, telling us that the game starts out before the bombs went off and we get to explore that whole Fallout universe beforehand. We see uh, the new redesigned Nuka-Cola's milk in the fridge. Uh, we see the sugar bombs. <laughs> and uh, as we're seeing this, the, the character actually narrates over some of these things. So kind of give it, getting us used to uh, the new world of Fallout where the character actually talks and, and not just staying still, or rather not saying anything. Uh, next thing is, I believe, when we can see the settings, uh, this little uh, man, <laughs> businessman working for vault Tech, just comes to us and is like, hey, you know, you should get into the vault and uh, see your family, what's it all about? So uh, this is really awesome, and again, you can hear the character talks. I really dig this dynamic uh, camera and this dynamic... Uh, you know, the whole voice acting is really, really, really uh, the icing on the cake. Now, that we're far from the icing on the cake, actually, let me take that back. We get to pick our, uh, you know, the registration form, and we put our points in charisma, endurance, intelligence, and the really, the first thing you notice is that Vault Boy there, he's not just artwork, he doesn't stay still, he actually has little animations, and they look awesome. I cannot wait to open up my Pit Boy menu and just see all the animations for all, like, the Vault Boy uh, <laughs> uh, perks we can use and, and other things. A really tiny details is Codsworth here, our little friendly robot, is that actually he says names and I believe they had uh, over uh, 200 or uh, lots of, lots of, recorded lots of names. So if I name myself, uh, I don't, what's a, a Ron, a Codsworth might say, hello Ron, Mr. Ron, you know, that's, that's really cool that they have pre-recorded uh, stuff like that. They didn't have to do that, but regardless, they added it into the game. So hopefully my name can make it into there and I can hear Codsworth or other characters say my name. That'd be pretty cool. At this point, uh, shit has literally hit the fan, uh, <laughs> bombs are about to go off and we are racing it, we are hustling over to Vault 111 here with our cute little baby, and uh, bombs go off, needless to say, we're right by the vault, we don't know if we survive or not, but of course we know that we do, cause this game, just like classic Fallout 3 style, actually re-emerges with us. Uh, coming out of the vault, so that's really cool. And uh, we re-emerged this uh, Vault 111 as the sole survivor of the entire vault, and not only that, but 200 years later, so that's really mysterious. Like, what is going on there? Uh, we get a glimpse, you know, we're getting used to the light. We see this beautiful, beautiful uh, environment, this huge landscape just, like, stretches for miles, and you can see at the top of Vault 111 here, just, like, oh, this new environment, it just, it looks more lively and I cannot wait for it. Of course, they want to describe the new graphics engine they are running for Fallout 4. Uh, they describe dynamic lighting and, you know, some other rendering, shrendering stuff 
uh, that I cannot, I do not know. I just know it looks good, and I cannot wait to play. And that beautiful water, though, it doesn't look like regular, you know, s static water that does absolutely nothing and you can't interact with. Of course, we can uh, discover locations just like any Fallout game. And here, we, I believe, we encounter Cogsworth here. Uh, and of course, they tell us that even the uh, dialogue, of course, is dynamic. So that's really cool. And right off the bat, they introduce us to man's best friend or humankind's best friend, a dog who doesn't like a dog. I love doggies. I really do love dogs. And I cannot wait for this little buddy of mine. So uh, the dog becomes a companion to you right off. I believe at the start of the game, it looks, it appears to be at the start of the game. Of course, you can give it commands like go here or stay, you know, just regular dog commands as well as retrieve items for you. So if you want a wrench, uh, how they, uh, you know, perceive it right there in the actual uh, tech demo. You can say, hey, dog, can you get me that wrench, please? And a dog will happily oblige. Right after the encounter with the dog, we can see the new awesome uh, mole rats, which look amazing, and the new vat system, which uh, coincidentally, well, not coincidentally, but here you can actually see that it's extremely dynamic in the sense that it's uh, when you're closing up for vats, you're not freezing time, you're slowing down time. So that really adds, really, really looks really cool, and, and I can dig it, I like that. Uh, not only that, but you can notice that enemies pop out of the ground now. So it won't be like, oh, where are the enemies? They're right in front of me. Now they'll actually pop out of the ground. And throughout this tech demo, you can actually see multiple different enemies coming out of the ground, such as uh, rat scorpions or even a death claw at one point. So that's really cool, and I cannot wait to see how uh, enemies come out. So that's really cool, and I cannot wait to see how enemies encounter with the environment and how we have to deal with them, uh, whether they give, jump on us or surprise us. And of course, the environments look as lovely as ever. The atmosphere, the environment, the landscapes, everything looks spot on. The lighting, the graphics, I cannot wait to play this game. And <laughs> something that really got me hyped for Fallout 4 is that they went into the details of describing the Pip-Boy origins. And I'm like, where are they going along you know, with this? You know, Describing how cool the Pip-Boy is. And it is, it's really cool. And that's when uh, they they let us have it. <laughs> they, they basically tell us, um, the Pip-Boy that you actually get in the game, we actually made a replica, and you can get it in the Fallout 4's Collector's Edition. Oh my god, I just, I went absolutely nuts, and I'm like, I have to reserve this Collector's Edition. So the way it works, uh, obviously it's a replica from the exact same one as the Pip-Boy on uh, the Fallout 4. Um, you can, well before I get into that, the new Pip-Boy, uh, system rather looks amazing and again again i'm describing the uh, the vault boy animations so it's really really cool the point is they made a replica uh you can oh another thing oh my god there's so many things to talk about before i even get to that but of course okay the point is made a scale replica for the pit boy you can put it in your phone uh download an application and basically stick your phone into the pit boy and from there you can actually control the pit boy the gimmick it's like a second a screen experience and you can you know do all everything you can do with the pit boy in game but in real life so really awesome and you cannot give uh, you cannot give thumbs down to a gimmick such as that cuz that's really really awesome uh, another thing I want to mention about the Pip-Boy in-game is, of course, the animations. So it, it's, again, not as static as it was before. Like, your character actually moves around as it looking at its Pip-Boy. And you can play multiple different little cool games, like uh, Donkey Kong here or uh, Invasion. And then during the Fallout 4 presentation, they hit us with yet another big bomb. And that is an application for the iPhone and Android, iOS and Android and that is uh, Bethesda's Fallout Shelter, of course, having to do with the Fallout universe. It's basically kind of like a, a Sims game where you're in charge of, uh, you're the overworld or the overruler of a vault. And it, it's basically up to you to uh, see how you run things, how you uh, gather resources, uh, make everyone happy, gets, uh, uh, get more uh, vault dwellers into your vault and then keep on building from that, building different uh, necessities, different rooms that uh, make different resources uh, for food or weapons or tr uh, combat training, knowledge, charisma, all that good stuff. And of course, they have the where you can make babies, right? <laughs> so you can have more people in the in the vault 
and uh, weird stuff that happens with the, within the Fallout universes, which gets attacked by, like, rad roaches or raiders, you know? Different really awesome, cool stuff like that. And then they announced that it's going to be released today! So, uh, on the iPhone, at least, we haven't, we don't know for the Android yet, but it looks really cool, and I definitely want to give it a try. Okay, back with uh, what I was talking about, how I'm a huge fan of uh, making uh, level editors or any map editors or sh anything that allows me to create what I want to create. Uh, something interesting about Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3 is that modders actually took it upon themselves to make mods where you can create your own structures or towns. I believe in Fallout New Vegas, they had a, a uh, mod that lets you build your own town, and I believe that was in the destroyed town of Nipton, uh, Nipton and New Vegas, where everything was completely decimated, and the modders basically took it upon themselves to make a mod where you rebuild everything. You're the mayor of the town, and you can rebuild uh, structures, construct houses, uh, add casinos, and different really cool stuff like that. And that was a really popular mod, and now uh, Fallout 4 here, Bethesda hit us, with a huge one basically stating, hey, you can make your own uh, homes and a little outpost. You can make dog houses, refrigerators, couches, beds, bars, stores, uh, build crops, build water, build electricity. Uh, we can also see that the vault, uh, vault tech bubble head uh, vault guys, oh, I don't even know how to say that, are back so we can get those because those are uh, definitely missing from new vegas now uh interesting thing back with electricity is that uh, with generators you can hook up uh, multiple things such as lights weapons terminals and uh, have like your own basically security system because if you do build your own uh, home or uh, location uh, it's going to be attacked by raiders and you want to have like a good security uh, system set up with turrets and flamethrowers and booby traps and all that awesome stuff and we through this uh tech demo we see the extent of like not even the extent probably just a small fraction of what you're able or capable of doing in the customization in fallout 4 so you scavenge for supplies and you can like make anything and i was so hyped when they mentioned this i was like yes i can create stuff in fallout 4 i am so ready i am so down and they ended it with a a light show of like a vault boy there with some flames and basically showing you like hey you can make some really cool and awesome stuff and of course they showed us the different locations you can build so that's really cool and i'm definitely looking forward to that yeah bet you were gonna see some videos on that so speaking of customization they go in further with uh adding that Every item in the game is useful to you and I cannot thank them enough for that because there are so many so much useless stuff that you do not need. Uh, basically it comes down to four components, adhesive, glass, screws and steel and every item in the game uh, gives you that. So if you're trying to make a scope or some sort of uh, extension or for your weapons, you can all you gotta get is get those uh, four basics and any item in the game so you don't have any useless items and you can make you can customize so many things here so they go into the weapon customization system and you can start out with a laser pistol and just go crazy and start making your own customized weapons and some of the customizations here look crazy i cannot wait to make my own weapons and scavenge for stuff it's gonna feel really better because i felt that that was a, a bit lacking actually in new vegas uh and uh, fallout 3 was like the customization of your weapons never really felt truly customizable. Does that make sense? I think it does. But the point it being that they showed off a different variety of weapons, and uh, yeah, we, I mean, we can even customize melee weapons as that. That's really cool. <laughs> so, hey, have fun, you melee people only. And again, keeping with the customizations, they announced that armor is also customizable and it's uh, layered armor as well. So that's really awesome. We can make our own armor uh, from materials and that is super sweet and I cannot wait to do that as well. Finally, we get to uh, a chance at a second trailer just basically showing off the different outfits and the silliness of the what is the world of Fallout 4 and just the fun stuff you can do within the game to show off new uh, weapons, the combat system looks amazing, the weapon sounds sound amazing, all of this just really, really awesome. And uh, I, I mean, come on, what can you say? <laughs> I really cannot wait to uh, play this game. I mean, you see some uh, new enemy types, uh, explosions, the graphics, the, the music. Oh, this music sounds lovely. 
And uh, we also get a hint of this new gameplay mechanic, this new armor suit that has like a jetpack and you kind of get into it, like some sort of a, like Iron Man armor. That is awesome. Whoa, what is up with that? That was really cool. Uh, I cannot wait uh, to play this game. I, I cannot say I am hyped for it. With that said, uh, oh my god. <laughs> I've been Cooley Wiz. I look forward to Fallout 4. I have mine uh, reserved already. I hope you get it reserved. Let me know what you thought about the conference. Let me know about other conferences in E3. Did you think some were good? Did you think others were lacking? Uh, what? Which one was your favorite? What game are you most hyped for? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Cooley Wiz, and I will see you all next time.